Hey everybody, it's Brian. I am back. So, everybody say, welcome back, Brian. <laughs> um, if you don't know, I was on vacation for two and a half weeks. I went through, I'm from America, but I went to like Barcelona. I spent a week in Paris. That was actually amazing. Um, went, you know, we took a cruise down through this whole little area and went to like Naples and Rome and uh, Monaco, Cannes, Nice, a few other places. It was, it was amazing. Um, it was hard to believe that, you know, just a little bit over yonder is where all the turmoil in the world's really going on right now. Maybe that was a very ignorant thing of me to say, but you know what I mean. That seems to be in the news here in the States. Anyways, before I left, I uploaded a video called Cute TCP Server Design Proof of Concept. Well, as promised, now that I've found a design that I'm happy on, I'm going to make a series of tutorials on it. I say series because there's just no way I can do all these in one tutorial. Um, so this one's going to be a little bit of explanation, and we're going to actually start the project, and then I'm going to do, I'm going to hope to do like three, maybe four videos, but it may take as much as five or six videos to do this. Um, if you didn't watch the QTCP Server Design Proof of Concept, it is all about the C10K problem. C10K pro no, the C10K problem is all about how to get a TCP server to handle 10,000 connections. Now, I'm going to preface that with and if you you really should join the Facebook Void Rums group because that was a very good conversation about it. And Ryan, uh, one of the members in there, had a really good thing. If you're saying if you need more than 1,000 connections, you're doing something wrong. And I actually believe that, but I like a challenge. And when I go through my Void Rums mailbox, probably 90% of the questions are about TCP and TCP server relations and how things work. So. If you go out to my website and you look for tutorials, you see it's kind of bare. You've got sockets, we got how to make a server, multi-threaded, a Q-thread pool, and then a synchronous. So um, if you're not really interested in watching the next few videos, but you're kind of curious what it's about, uh, I'm going to be showing how to do a synchronous and threading combined and do it correctly, or I should say the cute way of doing it. Um, if you're a programmer, you know there's many, many ways of doing anything. So, whew, now some of the concepts that we've used are signals and slots um, we've done a basic server application where everything's on the main thread if you try that you know it locks up um, we've tried multi-threads now with multi-threading um, there's the premise especially if you come from Java that you'll use one thread per socket well threads are very expensive objects to have in memory so if you start getting upwards of about 50, 60, 70, 100 connections, your server is going to start dying on you because it just can't create that many threads. The operating system will stop you and say, hey, stop what you're doing. So then I thought, you know, and this was a while ago, I said, ah, I'll try the queue thread pool. And what a thread pool is, is you have a group of threads, like say four or five, and you'll reuse those threads. So as a connection comes in, you'll dump it on a thread in the thread pool. So you're never creating more than maybe five or six threads, and they just get reused over and over. The problem with that is, if you have, like, say, a web server, you're only going to have five, six simultaneous connections, or however many threads. So if you have ten threads in your thread pool, and you have twenty people requesting a file, guess what? Ten people are going to get put on hold, waiting on the other ten people who are downloading. That's just the nature of a thread pool. And then there's a synchronous. Um, this is actually the real nature. If you really want to learn this, watch uh, the 70th video. It's actually out on my website, voidrealms.com, and it's also on YouTube. And it's just a synchronous. It's just signals and slots. It's so ridiculously simple, you're going to go, what? This is actually a tutorial? But yeah, it's actually the nature of how it was designed to be used. So I've tried, as you can tell, I've tried a lot of different models, and the model that I really came up with kind of uses a combination of, well, you make a thread, you dump all these synchronous connections onto that thread. Now, you also need to buffer, let me premise that, you need to buffer the downloads, meaning you can't just have 10,000 people downloading at max speed, you'll fry your network card, not really, but you know what I mean. You'll, you just won't be able to do it. Your, your server will choke and die. So you need a way of uh, what's called rate limiting that connection, meaning setting it to you will only download at 10k a second. You ever notice that? You go to like a website, um, not so much YouTube, but like if you're downloading something else, and you've got, let's say, here in the States, I've got, I think it's a 10 meg connection. And when I go to download something, it's not 10 megs per second. It'll cap around 1 or 2 megs a second. 
Well, that's actually the server restricting that, not Comcast, which don't get me into Comcast. I hate them. But So if you're really interested, read the C10K problem. There is a lot of information in here. Now, before we really dive in here, I want to make some disclaimers. Number one, as, you know, Ryan said in the Void Realms group in Facebook, if you're using over a thousand connections, you're doing something wrong. I happen to believe that, but there may be situations you want more than that. The reason why you'd be doing it wrong is there's these things called load balancers. Um, so you have, let's say, let's say 5,000 connections coming in at once, right? It'll hit a load balancer, which will pool your servers. You'll have multiple servers. And it'll say, which one of your servers is the least busy? And then it throws the connection onto that server. So you'd have, you know, five servers with identical websites on them. And it'll just, you know, the load balancer will send it to the, the server with the least load on it. That's the correct way of doing it. But if you're like me, and you like a challenge, and you're really interested in how this works, well, stay tuned, because I'm going to be going over it in depth. Maybe, if I can find cute. All right. Here is the actual working code, and I'm actually going to start this over from scratch, but I wanted to show you guys kind of the premise of what this is going to look like here. Um, it's called VR Sockets. I'm just going to call the project something else. But we're going to have these includes, and what we're going to do here is we're going to make a TCP server implementation, and then from that we're going to inherit and make a HTTP, or a web server implementation, with a rate transfer class. Now, I would love to just throw the code up here and talk about it, but every time I do that, people go, boo, don't do that. We want to see you type the code. So I'm going to type all this stuff out again and talk about it as we do it. I'm just going to run it just so you can see. And in Linux, it, it kicks out some error that I haven't really had a chance to investigate. In Windows, it doesn't. Um, on my Linux machine, it stops at about 1,024 connections. Uh, the reason for that is something called ulimit, or the hard file limit. So if you do ulimit-n in Linux, you'll see it's 1024, which means that's my, I think it's a, my soft descriptor. What it means really is that is the maximum number of files I can open. Now, if you know anything about Linux, Unix, etc., etc., sockets are considered files. So looking at my screen, how many files do I have open? Okay, now take that number and minus that from 1,024, and that's how many sockets I can actually open. Um, also, because I'm doing this on my actual computer, um, rather than having multiple machines and having you know a secondary machine connect to this machine, a true client-server model, that means it's even limited further. Now, you can increase that. I just haven't really invested the time, and I haven't really figured out how to do that. I found some posts on how to do it, but like I said, I just haven't had time. Uh, on Windows, however, um, my Windows 7 box, it's, uh, what is it? It's my gaming rig. Windows 7 with, I think I've got uh, 32 gigs of RAM, and it's just Windows 7 Professional. It's nothing fancy. Um, I think it was capping out right around 8,000 some odd connections, and the reason for that is... Um, Windows uses something called IO completion ports, which is a completely different animal than how Linux and Unix and all that handle it under the hood. Mac, I have not tested on yet, but I'm guessing it's probably got a hard limit similar to Linux and Unix. All right, so there is this guy right here, our U limit. Our server is running, and this is what's called Siege. If you don't know what Siege is, you can go out and Google it, maybe. Uh, come on, you. Siege is a uh, Linux utility which will put strain on your website. In other words, it'll put it under Siege. See what I did there? So once you've downloaded and installed Siege, it's a very easy tool to test with. And um, you just call it, and we're going to say 800 connections. And there's the actual server port, 127001, and we're running on port 2000 because I said so. Um, if you try to run on a, anything lower than port 1024, you're going to get, you know, warning restricted access or it just won't let your program run. Um, I think that's actually in most operating systems except for Windows 7. I can't vouch for Windows 10 because I hate to say it, I really have no interest in Windows 10 right now. So we're going to put this aside and we're going to actually just do this. So this is the Siege program hitting my little program here. And you can see how it's 
really just hammering it. And it's getting HTTP one 404, meaning file not found, because I really haven't implemented anything. It's actually just requesting the index. And we're just going to let Siege hammer it. You can see how it's just whipping through here. And we're going to control C that. And you can see this server just handled 36,849 hits, availability 100% over 23 seconds. Uh, failed transactions zero, meaning we had zero dropped. Oof. Our longest transaction was one second, well, I'm sorry, 1.31 seconds. Our shortest was zero. So as you can tell, this is a pretty beefy little server platform that we've got here. Um, this is scalable. And I need to define scalable because depending on who you talk to, scalability has a different meaning. When I say scalable, I mean you can inherit these classes and from the TCP class make an FTP or an HTTP or SSL. If you really wanted to go out and get an SSH library because Qt really doesn't have it built in, then you could do that. So I'm kind of running out of steam here. I'm a little bit tired. I switched jobs. so. I'm going to try and do a video every night. I can't guarantee that because, like I said, when you switch jobs, you don't really know what's what's coming from one day to the next. So I think we're going to call it quits on this one. I know I said we'd start the project, but we're going to start it fresh next video. Um, questions, comments, concerns, I'd love to hear from you. Um, unfortunately, I just cannot keep up with the flood that is YouTube. So go out to Facebook. There is a Void Realms group in Facebook. Um, I try to you know, hang out in there once in a while because there's about 2, 250, 250 people in there. Um, if you email me, good luck. Uh, my, I just give up on my inbox. I actually have a separate email account for business just because I can't keep up with it. I try to go in there. And Chuck, Chuck with the fireworks program, if you're listening, I have not forgotten about you, bro. I'm going to get to it. <laughs> I swear I will. All right. That's all for this uh, tutorial. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, I would say I hope you found this educational and entertaining, but I really haven't taught you anything. That's coming in the next tutorial.